The Sports Scout Report podcast with Lieber Keen's Louisiana High School Football Playoff Prediction Show is presented by Medine's Collision Center. Take control, choose Medine's. Gross Savon Lodge, the true sportsman's paradise. Treads and Care Tire Company, the tires you need, the service you want. And Harvey Autos, the name you have trusted for years. Welcome to the Sports Scouting Report Podcast with Lee Brickeen. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Sports Scouting Report Podcast with Lee Brickeen. <laughs> I am your... Uh, Host for today, Jace will turn his producer, and yeah, I'm with the man, the myth, the legend himself, Lee Burkeen, <laughs> going to break, break down all these Louisiana high school football brackets. It's that time of year again, Lee, and we're yeah. really excited to get back to playoff time. I'm ready to talk about some football, Jace. I mean, you know, there's a lot to talk about, and you know, uh, the LHSA didn't do a show this year, and I'm glad we're doing one. I want to let people know this is not the permanent location. This is just to get off, you know, just to show video of us uh, and just a little homemade stuff. I mean, I think people can appreciate all these programs in front of us. And these are from games I've gone to over the last 31 years. Amazing. And these, as Jace even sees them, he hasn't seen them till today, but they no. go all the way back to 1980. Well, I've seen them on the walls back in their <laughs> old office. <laughs> right. You know, I've seen them right. back on the walls. We couldn't, we couldn't put everybody's on this table because we don't have room for 200 and, you know, 200 playoff teams. But a lot of these teams, programs you'll see are from the, uh, a lot of this year's teams like Captain Shreve, Catholic High, Acadiana, Calvary, Jesuit. I even have an old Farmerville program. How about that? Which is now Union Parish. Right. I have an Abbeville one. You know, go Abbeville, sure. man. This is from... This is from 2012. Okay. And then I have, you know, your Episcopal team here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, from 2012. Santa Mall, Haynesville, uh, Hanville, Destrahan, Zachary's three state titles you see on the cover. You might and, get another one this year. And Oak Grove. And I, if I had room, Bird, you know, Bird's in mm -hmm. it. I've got a few of their programs. An old Jesuit, the Blue Jays, U High right here. So if you want physical proof that Lee's been to all these games <laughs> for I mean, how many years? I, I mean, that's your physical proof right there. I have there. boxes, boxes, <laughs> of the, and I kept my programs. Uh, and if, if parents see this, if we're doing this homemade show that we're doing today, I think this is something different. You can, And then we've got – this is one bookcase uh, at our office – that we have several of, and this is just one of about 15. I've got about 30 cases of books, and we'll be bringing that out in our podcast in the future. Sure. The good thing about it is having all this stuff to show people as yeah. memories. And on top of the bookcase, you see here the Louisiana Football Magazine hat. Uh, that you've worn a lot, your visor that you've worn a lot over the years. And we got some colleges represented. We're trying to get more yeah. memorabilia, too. There's a Southeastern football on top of the – bookcase there there's the LSU helmet and a UL hat so we're trying to get uh, more of these represented but uh once this is the first show so I'm sure we'll get uh more teams represented and, and under there. the UL hat uh-oh it's a uh, no. go rebels oh man. West Monroe uh, West Monroe, man. West Monroe. Yeah. so yeah, yeah but, I've got all kind of hats I even have a, your old Catholic high hat mm -hmm. I've got a Jesuit hat okay I think I have an Oak Grove hat somewhere around sure. here you know wow an evangel Christian shirt you know I mean it's yeah. just uh that's cool. Fun. That's cool. So we're gonna start, Jace. Tell everybody. Yeah. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna break this thing down. Break it down. It was a day later than usual. Yeah. You know, we had to wait an extra day, but hey, we still got the playoff brackets coming up, and we can talk about them. So before we, I ask you some questions about these teams. Let's just talk about some of the matchups. Number one, Logan Sport. They have a bye first round. They have the number one seed. Yeah. Number 16, Arcadia, plays number 17, East Iberville. They played in the playoffs before. Uh, number 9, Bazil, plays Magnolia School. 
Delta Charter gets a bob. Delta Charter, Storm yeah. having himself a really good season this yeah. year. And talk about having a good season. Sarter Charter, they get themselves a bye at the number five seed. And the Sarter Charter will play the winner of West St. John in block. And then let's go with the bomb side of the bracket. Number 13, East Beauregard, plays number 20, Maryville. Number four, Oak Grove, trying to go for their third straight Class 1A state championship. They have a bye. And then... Also, Grand Lake, they're trying to go back to the state championship after their Cinderella run last year. They have a bye with the number three seed. Grand Lake will play the winner of Oberlin in Plain Dealing. Number 11, Lincoln Prep, will play number 22, Del High. Number six, Haynesville has a bye. Can't count out the Tornadoes out. Uh, I believe that's their 42nd straight year they made the playoffs. That's, that's incredible. Uh, number seven, LaSalle has a bye, too. Got a lot of byes in the Class 1A bracket. Number 10, White Castle. They made uh, Superdome a couple of times before. They have number 23, Centerville. Number 15, Northwood Lena plays against number 18, Gaydon. And then number two, Homer has a bye. So that is your class 1A bracket. You can see with the graphic on the screen, you can pretty much follow uh, my lead uh, with all these uh, scores and brackets. So, Lee, my first question is, now a lot of people coming in the class 1A bracket, people say, oh, it's a four-team race. People think it's Logansport and Oak Grove yeah. and, you know, uh, Homer and Grand Lake. But who is a team besides maybe those four that you can see – making a run, a Cinderella run, like Grand Lake last year when it's all said and done. This is very easy if you watch film, White Castle. Mm. Um, White Castle's 10, I think. Uh, I'm not, yep. you know, I'm not a big seeds sure. guy. I am if you earned it. That's fine. That's great. But, I mean, after the first three seeds, four seeds, everything's kind of basically, I think, close. Um, White Castle is dangerous. Um, they're better than they were when they went to the Dome, I think, two years ago, Jace. You don't always make it if you're better, but, man, they've got some talent. Akeem Young, their quarterback, is really good. They've got great athletes. And, look, I've been watching White Castle since 1991. And, I mean, every time they hit the field, they can beat you. I remember when Redemptress was loaded with Lyle Collins and, and Jeremy Hill and even back to the Redemptress teams that had, you know, David Plaisance and, and Shelton Sampson Sr., uh, they were very good. And they would. It was like, hold on, man, you got to beat this team. And so White Castle is my team to beat. And they might be the most athletic team in on the public side of one A. And that's over Logan Sport. Right, right. In the Logan Sport, they you got to get credit to their coaching staff what they've done because they started yeah. season zero and four, and they've won every game yeah. since then. So that's a pretty incredible feed by Coach McGee. You know they're going to be ready for the playoffs. Is there a first round? There's not a lot of first round matches because of all the buys, but is there a first round matchup that, that catches your eye? Uh, you know, in 1A, it's probably the most watered down as far as it's the same teams that are going to, you know, compete in, in the end of this. Uh, I will say that there's really not, you know, Arcadia East Iverville might be a good game. Mm-hmm. I mean, sure. neither one I think will make to the to the dome or anything or wherever it's going to be played. Right, it was like they're going to have to play Wilkinsport yeah. next round, yeah. so it's going to be tough. But I think it'll be a good game because Arcadia and East Riverville are very similar on talent. Um, Arcadia has got a good little young team, and other than that, I don't really see anything else. No, Plain Dealing and Oberlin are two teams that could be a, a good matchup, Jace. Sure, uh, Oberlin out of the Lake Charles area. Uh, you know, plain dealing is out of the Shreveport area. I've seen both of these teams are, you know, plain dealing is very athletic. Uh, but that would probably be the game. Plain dealing is better than 19. And mm. they're really a top five seed, you sure. know, in 1A, I think. And now we're going to give our state championship picks at the end in our <laughs> yeah, final right, segment. Right. Uh, but my final question before I'm moving on to the private side, who is a player, you know, because every year in the playoffs, like, for example, Puka Williams, when he had mm -hmm. his great run in the playoffs. Is there a team, I and mean, you've seen all these teams play, is there a, a player or a couple of players that you really like from this yeah. 1A bracket? I like Derek Tate at uh, White Castle. He's six one, about 190. Man, he looks the part. Looks like an SEC player. Um, he's a good player. He's a senior. He's come on late in his career, kind of a late bloomer. Um, and then when you look at, uh, you know, Oak Grove, you look at, I mean, they've got three big time players. They got the freshman quarterback Jackson, mm -hmm. who's Jackson six, Bradley, yep. 6'3", 190, 200 pounds. He's going to be a prayed all American when he's a senior. 
Uh, you got Caleb Proctor, the linebacker at Oak Grove. Monteris Freeman at Oak Grove. Oak Grove's D-line is incredible. Um, and then you look at uh, one other player that I'd like to mention is Kashawn Kidd from Homer. Uh, great athlete. Um, they've got some great players at Homer. Uh, you know, you figure sooner or later Homer's going to knock the wall down and get to a state title game. It could be this year. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, we'll talk about the picks later. Sure. And let's move on to Division Four, the private side. And uh, it's going to be tough as always. Number one, the Washita Christian trying to go for their third straight state championship appearance. And, you know, besides uh, replacing their quarterback went to UL last year, it's been really no slowing down this offense despite – him graduating, and I'm sure you're going to talk about a specific receiver later on from Washtenaw Christian, but they have number 16, Cedar Creek, but that's yeah. that's no gimme. Cedar no. Creek is really good at number 16. Then you have number 8, Central Catholic, playing against number 9, Ascension Catholic. Uh, number 5, Sacred Heart, will play number 12, St. Edmund. And number 4, Calvary Baptist, will play number 13, Hamilton Christian, and that's the defending Division four state champions, champions led by Landry Liddy at quarterback. Number three, Opelousas Catholic on the bomb side of the bracket. Number three, Opelousas Catholic plays number 14, St. Frederick. Number six, Vermillion Catholic faces off. Number 11, Catholic Point P called their game this year, so I got to see Catholic Point P this year. Number seven, St. Mary's plays against number 10, Mary Park Country Day. They have themselves a really good running back at Country Day. And then number two, Southern Lab. And, you know, as talented as always, probably the most talented uh, in this bracket here. They face off number 15, Hanson Memorial. So that is your Division Four playoff bracket. Now, we talking about first round. Uh, there are some intriguing games in this first round of Division Four. What catches your eye? Uh, there's a lot of teams in this one. Uh, you know, Washita Christians, actually, they didn't probably want to draw Cedar Creek. I mean, that's yeah. a, a rival game locally. You know, Cedar Creek out of Ruston. Tristan Wiley, the receiver at Cedar Creek, is phenomenal. He's another Jack Besh. You know, maybe not as uh, fast, but bigger and stronger. Um, and not far off speed-wise with Jack. Uh, and then Thomas Culp's another good receiver at Washington Christian. The firepower at OCS is incredible. And then, you know, Cedar Creek needs a big game out of Jed Worthy, who's their top player as a senior. Uh, but as far as game-wise, Jace, um, you know, there's more games, obviously, uh, more team matchups here. I think the one to keep an eye on is Hamilton Christian is very talented out of Lake Charles. Mm -hmm. They they, they uh, got a lot of new kids from the storm from other schools. Sure. And so they've got about four or five college prospects, and they're playing the big dog, Calvary Baptist, who's, you know, reigning champs. Uh, that's a game – I'm not saying they're going to beat Calvary. I'm just – don't take Hamilton Christian lightly. Um, Ascension Catholic – uh, is a nine Central Catholics and an eight. I think Central Catholic might not win this one uh, prior to the sus suspension. So the kids, uh, Central Catholic loses, what, five players off their yep, starting 22, right? right? right. Um, and so that's going to change things. Central Catholic's pretty good, too. Uh, but I, I think St. Fred's the sleeper here, Annapolis is Catholic, and they play one another. I mean, right. you know, unfortunately, somebody's got to lose. Uh, St. Fred's led by Thomas. Marcella, big time DB uh, senior. Uh, Opelousas Catholic's got a very tough, scrappy team out of Opelousas. Uh, Catholic Point Capi, you've seen them, I've seen them. Uh, Leighton Elliott, Andrew Jewell, a couple of good players. Uh, they're not going to, you know, walk over Vermillion easily. That's going to be a great game. So there's a lot of really good games. And here's another good one St. Mary's of Natchitoches. Man, they're led by uh, Adam Parker, their quarterback. He's, mm -hmm. he's come on, man. I watched him play this year. He's got something to him. He's a junior. He's going to have a chance, I think, to be a D1 quarterback. Uh, and in Gavin LaGrange, who's a big old D-line right. for St. Mary's. They've had a lot of LaGrange kids. Yeah, yeah, they got a good team. And look, Country Day has come on a little bit. I mean, they played, you saw them against yep, Episcopal. Sure. Uh, so there's a lot of great games. And look, don't count out Hanson out mm -hmm. of Franklin, Louisiana, playing Southern Lab. Southern Lab, you don't know who's going to show up. and uh, right. But they need a big game out of Douglas Thornton, their running back, who's – I don't know, 5'4", 170, sure. but that guy runs like he's 280. Yes, definitely. And, uh, yeah, Southern Lab, they've uh, been a meet. Uh, that's a pretty impressive win. And, yeah, and we're not going to look too far ahead, but there's a potentially a rematch from the state championship last year if Washtenaw Christian and Calvary Baptist go into semis. But we'll talk more about that. We're going to take a quick commercial break here. You're uh, watching now the Sports Scout Report podcast with Lieber Keen. We'll be right back. 
Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. Welcome back to the Sports Gown Report podcast with Lee Burkeen. I'm Chase Lejeune, uh, your host for today. Get the Good to turn the tables a little bit. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have obviously will go d- and dig deep down to the analysis after watching all these teams really throughout the whole season. But before we go into Class 2A, uh, yeah, one more side note about Calvary Baptist. I know Landry Lee is a quarterback, and yeah. he had himself a, a great state championship game, the Louisiana Tech commit. Um, he's one of the best quarterbacks out there in the state and have a really explosive offense. I just want to mention that their offense is better than last year, which is scary. That's a little hint of maybe my prediction in that class when this is all yeah. said and done. But they have a new receiver, Jace, by the name of Seneca Lee, who came out of nowhere, a senior. He's mm-hmm. four five guys, six foot one eighty. They already had Miles Williams at tight end. They already had Walter Williams at running back. They've got other receivers, Hermes, who's a sophomore. They have the most talented offense, one of the most talented offenses in the state. And and Liddy's that guy that's back that threw for, you know, almost four thousand yards last year. So uh, I don't know how you stop that team offensively, but, yeah, I wanted to mention that before sure. we move on. Let's go to 2A, and Manny, they're trying to repeat as state champions, and they're loaded as always. They entered the Class 2A bracket as the number one seed. They'll play number 32 seed Independence in the first round. Number 16 Pine will face off against number 17 East Lucian, one of the uh, sneakier, talented teams in Class 2A. Number nine, Red River. They're having a really good season under Coach Jeff Harper, and they've been really explosive on the offensive side of the football. They play number 24, Rayville. Number eight, Rose Pine will play a really good matchup here. Number eight, Rose Pine playing against number 25, Kentwood. Yeah. Uh, Rose Pine led by Ethan Fry, the LSU baseball commit. Also a pretty good quarterback as well. Number five, North Caddo. They have a pretty special receiver I'm sure you're going to be talking about, but they play number 28, Springfield. Number 12, Port Allen. Just saw them play last week against Episcopal. They are a really scrappy defense. They play against number 21, De Quincey. Uh, number 13, Winfield, a team that you've been high on this year, Lee. They face off against number 20, Del Combrey. And uh, number four, Avoyles. They've been really good this year with their 240-pound running back, Carlos Bazard. Uh, they face off number 29, Bunky. Now let's look at the bottom side of the 2A bracket. Number three, General Trias, another great season after making the semifinals last year. They're trying to break the door down and get to the state championship. Their, their first game will be against number 30 seed, Northeast. Number 14, South Plaquemines will face off number 19, Welsh. Number 11, St. Helena has a very tough number 22 Kinder team that made it to the state championship game last year. Number six, Amy will play against, as talented as always, will play against numbers 27, Del High Charter. Number 7, Jonesboro Hodge, who actually defeated North Caddo earlier this year. They face off against number 26, Oakdale. You know, Mangum's always going to be in the running. They're the number 10 seed. They face off number 23, Capital. Number 15, Franklin, will play against number 18, D.R. Bone Woods Charter. And Coach Tommy Tharp, the former Mangum coach, has done an excellent job with D.R. Bone Woods Charter. And then the final game, the undefeated Lauraville, Faces off against number 32, West St. Mary. There is your class to a bracket. And, Lee, what do you think is going to be a team to keep an eye out for in this 2A bracket? There are a lot of really good football teams this year. You talk about Rose Pond, Red River, St. Helena's had some impressive victories this year, Manny, Amit. You know how talented Amit is. Uh, what are your thoughts on just a, a team that can make a run in this 2A bracket? Well, the team that looks like a college team is St. Helena Central. Uh, St. Helena Central, I don't ever remember seeing them this talented, Jace. Uh, they have – I hate to keep throwing the prospect thing out there, but they've got like 17 kids that will go college. I've never seen that at St. Helena. If St. Helena is probably due to put it together soon, and unfortunately Kinder, who's a good team, uh, they're going to see that this team's like playing a college. I mean, they're 290 across on OD line, St. Helena. Their athletes are all like six foot to six four. Um, St. Helena is the team that can beat anybody. I think they can beat five, eight teams. But if, if you, if this team can come together, put it together, St. Helena is the most talented team in this whole bracket. Now, some people go, Lee, what do you, you know, you, you woke up and you, you, you watched a horror movie, you lost your train of thought. No, 
it's I'm just telling it like it is. A Manny, obviously, you know they're the, they they've come together. Obviously, they're they're good. They're the team to beat, reigning champs. Right. Uh, but Red River, like you mentioned, is a sleeper. I want to mention to all my Cajun friends, and, and look, Jace, a lot of people do it. Delcom. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've always had trouble with that one. I'm, but I'm protecting you. I'm protecting there you. Go. There you go. There you go. You got my back. And they'll give you some, uh, probably some, <laughs> some free Delcom. boudin and all that. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I didn't say it right for about 20 years. Yeah, right. I, actually, I didn't, I didn't even <laughs> pronounce Iowa, which I used to say Iowa was Iowa. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. But, it, you know, that's, it is a tricky one now. It is a tricky one. Um, and then, but they're... 50-50 shot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> General Trass is the team. I'd like to see them get to the state championship game somehow just because I've got a soft spot in my heart on what they've done at General Trass and, and what they're doing is incredible the last two years. Uh, but, you know, Winfield, yes, I do like Winfield. They're not the team to beat and they're not the talk of the town, but they're a very good team. They play hard. Uh Look, East Feliciana's 17. I mean, this is a tough oh, yes. bracket. Yep. I mean, East Feliciana would not be 17 on the private 1A side. Right. They, they gave a pistol ball. all they can handle in the first game of the year. So, seeing them play, and they got a six foot five receiver, that's uh, pretty good as well. Okay. And, uh, yeah, speaking of players, Lee, uh, in this bracket, I know everybody's talking about the first name that probably jumps up to everybody is uh, jumps out to everybody is Tackett Curtis. The quarter now playing quarterback for Manny. He's a really good one. He's only a junior, but yeah, General Trust is a really good quarterback yeah, too. Yeah. We talked about Ethan Fry, uh, Omarion Miller is a receiver for North Cato. There are a lot of ta- there's a lot of talent into it. I'm gonna tell you about a team who I love to watch play this year, and I have speaking of my heart, you know when a kid just plays phenomenal football and they're never gonna be a college prospect, but you're like, man, that that dude can play. Mm-hmm. They got a quarterback at Bonkey. Okay. And if there was a Heart of Champion award to give out this year in Louisiana, their quarterback at Bonkey, his now I might mispronounce this one. Okay, Jason. okay. His name is Hayden Salcida, I believe. Yeah, right, right. He's like five six, maybe, mm-hmm. one ninety, runs a four five. Wow. He is a magician. Okay. And I watched Bonkey recently against uh I think it was uh, one of our teams in, in Monroe, but I, I watched him, man, and he is so spectacular with the ball. Bonky believes, you know what I mean? They believe. They're not talent, super, you know, prospects everywhere, but they just, they bring it. And this little guy, Hayden Sasada, is, is incredible. So if there's the guy to watch in the whole bracket that's probably not going LSU or UL, mm-hmm. man, go see Bonky. Buy some peanuts and some popcorn and go watch Bonky play. Uh, they, they've got a tough uh, game against the Voils. Yeah, it's going to be very tough. Be very here, tough. Here's something I'll throw out to the listeners and, and the viewers now is that, yeah, you talk about Carlos Bezart, the big yeah, running back. right. He's 6'1", 240. <laughs> yes. It's not even legal to be in 1A, and you're giving him a pitch out, and he runs 4'6", 4, 4, 5, 5. And they've got another guy, 6'2", 230, that they alternate. Mm. And it's like, how do you stop that? But here's the secret behind it. They got the largest player in the state blocking for him, Tay Augustine. Yeah, he's like four, was he four hundred pounds? Six foot eight. Wow. All right. So Tay, when Tay goes in motion or Tay goes in front, how do you get around Tay Augustine? I mean, you you I mean, you're five eleven, maybe mm-hmm. two hundred in this classification. Right, with two A, right, me and two A. I mean, you got a guy that's six eight, four hundred blocking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, you know, everybody's bunched in to block it of oils, right, with that, yeah, that option. Right, and, sure. And, but it, it's it's incredible. It's hard to stop. Of oils, to me, is another team. I'd love to see them make a state championship game. Yeah, and they could uh, they could definitely get there. But, and uh, but, it's going to be tough with the Manny on that side. It's, but, it's all about the draw. Another talented team you were asking me about, sleeper teams, is Jonesboro Hodge. You know, since Charles Scott played there, former right. LSU running back, I watched them. That's a team I watched against Bonky. Mm-hmm. And they were just, I mean, Bunky's a good team, and they they pretty much dominated Bunky uh, on on film. But Tadri Malone, their quarterback, six three, six four, really good athlete. Uh, Justin Callahan's one of the best athletes in that district they play in. He's a he's a D- one double A receiver. Uh, Jamaria Lewis, uh, and they're playing their season for one of their fallen teammates who died this year. Uh, Lejavian Nicholas, you, and, and I know Jace, you actually told me when that happened, you had read about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I know they're playing to to win it all or try to get to the state championship game for their teammate who who passed away, I believe, this summer, right? Yeah, it happened before the before the season, so it was a uh, very tragic. But 
Yeah, and you know that Jonesboro Highs is trying to dedicate the season to him, and they've had him for a really good season. They even, in fact, beat North Caddo, who's one of the top teams in yeah. 2A, and uh, they've already been in some playoff caliber teams. This, this is a hard bracket to win. I know everybody thinks Manny's going to win it again, but Mangum's huge. Uh, Mangum averages 290 on OD line. You know, Terry Smith's one of their top players. He's a big-time offensive t- D tackle. Uh, and- yeah, Mangum High School, uh, great team. Uh, they're going to be a team to, to really deal with Jace in uh, 2A. I also like North Caddo. I mean, they have a great young receiver that LSU wants and everybody else. But I like their quarterback, Zeon King. Uh, Zeon's a very good player. Uh, Manny's led by London Williams, so I love, you know, what Manny's doing, and, and they have a chance to repeat. Uh, but Corey Jones is one of the top O linemen in 2A. Uh, James Hickman. The, the offensive line for Manny is, I think, what gets them where they need to be and their defense is you're talking about Tackett, man, as a safety. You don't <laughs> yeah. see too many quarterbacks play safety. No. And come up and hit you like a Brian Bosworth. Okay, he he's he means it now. He's six three, all of it, about two fifteen, two twenty, and he can go. He's a little bit different kind of recruit than you're used to seeing coming out of Louisiana. He's the Chad Jones, North Louisiana version right now. Uh, he's only a junior. Uh, and he's playing quarterback for Manny. That's the hardest part about beating Manny is you got this guy at quarterback, and then you got to face him at linebacker, safety. Like a defense. Taysom Hill type. <laughs> right, right. He looked very good, very good analogy. Uh, very athletic, 4'5", 6'3", 220. Can't defend that in 2A. Uh, but to talk about, we were talking about Avoyles earlier. Um, they've got it. We are talking about the big lineman, Tay Augustine, 400 pounds, 6'8". General Trask, Wadet Williams, their quarterback, is really good. I like Wadet, and they've got some great players around him. Uh, but South Plaquemines is a sleeper team I like. Uh, they're 14th. Uh, Ezekiel Bourgeois is one of the best players in 2A, receiver, DB. And let me tell you something, South Plaquemines can run, Jace. they got a ton of speed, uh, a lot of good players. they got enough size to be a problem. But that's my sleeper team for 2A. You always ask every class. And I, I like South Plaquemines is the no-name team this year that could do some damage. And they made some uh, deep playoff runs in the past, too, going back a couple of years. Uh, they made some runs to the Dome. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, move over to Division Three, And uh, this is going to be an interesting bracket. I mean, it's not – these private teams is not as much teams, but the competition is huh. just as tough. And we start off with – Lafayette Christian, of course, and they're going for, I believe, this is this would be their fifth straight state championship if they can pull it off. But they have a bye once again as the number one seed. Look, I, I can't eat five oranges five days in a row, more or less, think of five <laughs> state championships. Yeah. Now, now, look, Lafayette Christian, they're different than last year. Last year they were an offensive team with Sage Ryan. This year they're a defensive team. And they've got a great defense. If it wasn't for Catholic High beating them like they did, their their season's pretty much clear sure. again. But Jordan Allen, it all starts with the DBs at Lafayette Christian. Right. And their D-line and their linebackers. And so this might be a state championship team for defense for them. But hold back so far. you still got Catholic New Iberia. you got Ascension Episcopal. Both. Yeah, they had to play the winner oh, of that game. these two did not want to play one another. Trust me, because they're used to seeing each other every year. Uh, K.K. Reno is a heck of a player for Catholic and New Iberia. He's a senior. Uh, Shea Lee is a great player for them, uh, Catholic. Russell Lewis is one of the best linemen you'll mm-hmm. see in the state. Sure. And then, look, Newman. I mean, we all hear about Arch Manning, but here's the guys you got to worry about besides Arch. you got to worry about Bo Bordelon blocking on the O-line, his brother on D-line, and you got to worry about Will Randall, Will Randall tight, tight end. end. Yep. Will Randall's the best tight end probably in America that's only a sophomore. 6'4", 240 pounds, runs a 4'6". He looks like he can play for the Saints right now. I mean, he's in New Orleans. Heck, they might even try to recruit him. <laughs> yeah, in. right. But, yeah. But then you can't forget about St. Charles. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have a bye. Uh, they're very talented. Uh, Frank Monica left them with a lot of talent when he retired, the legendary Frank Monica. And in Notre Dame, man, nobody's talking about Notre Dame and Louis Cook. Yeah. I mean, he loves this. You know, yeah, he can't take that for granted. He's the quietest number two ranked team in the state, and they have a senior quarterback whose last name is Swacker. He's, he's kin to uh, the old the coach he used to coach at Santa Mall, David Swacker. This is Nick Swacker. I think it's his nephew, but he's 6'3", about 190, Jace, and he's starting to come into his own. They have a good defense again. 
And then, obviously, your team Episcopal, man. You're doing the games. They have a bye, and it looks like it'll be Newman. Newman Episcopal, right? Yep, that's so going to set it up. Game. Yep, and they've actually – Episcopal has made the core finals the last four years have not gone past that. So, they actually had to play Lafayette Christian in the quarters last year. It was a close game, and for the second straight year, they were undefeated district champions, and they have a tough draw. They're going to have to play – Newman, but they have that game at home. So as a number four seed, they'll host Newman. Uh, that should be a great core final game. And Lafayette Christian, as you as you mentioned, they will play the winner of Ascension Episcopal in Catholic New Iberia. That's the top side of the bracket. Now the bomb side of the bracket, St. Charles Catholic will have the bye. They did beat Newman this year. Now, no, I know Frank Monica is not the coach over there, but I know his influence is still there with Coach Wayne Stein. He's done a great job of continuing that tradition at St. Charles Catholic. But they all play the winner of Dunham and Holy Saver Menard. And Dunham, and that's the team that you can't overlook, too. And then, yet yeah, the last matchup, Notre Dame will have a bye. The top five seeds have a bye in this bracket. They'll play the winner of of St. Thomas Aquinas and Pope John Paul. So those that's pretty much how the bracket lays out. Now, what are a couple of players to really keep an eye on? You already mentioned Jordan Allen for Lafayette Christian, and I believe he's committed to Penn State right now. Decommitted. De- he, he just yeah. decommitted yeah. from Penn State. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, yeah, that was the last time I checked. Yeah. And, yeah, so, yeah, Newman, everybody knows about Arch Manning. Everybody knows about him. And then, uh, yeah, Noah Dame, you talked about Swacker. Uh yeah, what you, what you thought about? There's another ge- a kid that to mention, Menard. Uh, they have a good team, and they have a great young quarterback. Another quarterback, man. I mean, we've got so many quarterbacks in Louisiana, Jason. Sorry, by the way, by going on a rant talking about everybody, and you didn't preview the whole district. <laughs> I was just excited. Yeah, it's an exciting um, bracket to look so at. So, Michael Henry's the quarterback at Menard. He's a sophomore. Michael Henry can play, and he's 6'2", and he looks like another future D1 quarterback in Louisiana. Another one. Class of 224, I believe. You know, in Episcopal, you know, everybody talks about, you know, all their their team, 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 and they are a team, and their coaching staff, and you do their games. But I'm very impressed with their defense. They talk about, you know, we've talked about Thomas D. Arman, how great mm, he sure, is. Sure, sure. And Ethan Carmouche, too. Yep. Ethan, they're phenomenal players. And then you throw in um, Bro at quarterback. Yeah, Mark receiver. Cooper Bro. Yep. But Lewis Ward. defensively, David Cresson. Mm-hmm, and right. his brother. Yeah, Chase. I yep. mean, and those two guys in the defense O-line that plays both ways, and they're not big. That's what amazes me about Episcopal. They're not huge. I don't know if anybody's over 250. I think one O-lineman's 250. Yeah, maybe a wrangle off yeah. would be the only one. But and There's yeah, another kid that might be close to that. But yeah. more, besides that, they're just not – they're just so good as a team. Mm-hmm. And you just – I mean, it's like, it's like playing Alabama – Right. When you play Episcopal on the, on the high school level of small classifications, they don't make mistakes. They might not have the offense like Newman. They might not have the defense like Lafayette Christian or uh, Notre Dame or St. Charles Catholic. But what they do have is that they're complementary team. They, they're they really good in all three phases. Yeah. They're good on offense. They're solid on defense, like you mentioned. And they're really good on special teams. So that they just really play complementary football, and that's what makes them pretty unique. And Lewis Ward's a good young quarterback. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yep. The thing about Episcopal, like I said, they're hard to scout. I mean, it's got so many good players, and, and they, they play as a team. I really believe Episcopal could, could you know, we'll talk about that later sure. on the teams. Yep. But this is a bracket where you hate to see anybody lose because even, yeah. even St. Thomas Aquinas is very talented. I saw them play yes, this year. Yes, they are. They have a lot of talent, and even Pope John Paul II has got some players. So, I mean, they have a good quarterback at Pope John Paul as well. So, yep. And he's playing some running back for yeah. him. He does a little, he's, like, he's another Taysom Hill type of player. Like I said, George Arata. Ascension Episcopal's eight, and they're very talented. Speaking of a good quarterback, they have themselves a good quarterback yeah, too. another yep. young quarterback. So, I mean, this is the, the bracket of quarterbacks, and I think whoever has the hot night is going to win. Yeah. Uh, and defensively, you know, you got to look at Lafayette Christian sure. as the team to beat defensively. Mm-hmm. They're the best defense. Can you score on Lafayette Christian? And will this, you know, we'll talk about our picks later. Sure. But, you know, it, it, I think Newman's obviously got the appeal with Arch and what he's done. But, hey, this to me is a four or five team race. Yeah. Like, it, like we mentioned, Lee, and I was just about to say that, but this is four or five teams I could see coming out of it as state champions. Yeah. And, even though they might not play the number of games as a as a public school might, 
the road to the championship is just as tough when you get yeah. right into it. Even even Dunham has come on. I mean, Dunham is young. They're talented. They might even have more skill talent than Episcopal. Mm, they do. And they have more size. Yep. They're even bigger than an Episcopal, but, I mean, they're not somebody to sleep on. No, they're not. Dunham's, I can see Dunham making a run, too. Dunham's hitting their stride. They're very young, too. Yep, we're going to take a quick commercial break. Then we're going to go into 3A. We'll jump into both the public and private. Talk about tough. It's going to be tough as always, too, when we break that down. We'll be right back. You're watching the Sports Game Report podcast with Lieber Keen. If you need a paint job or repairs to your vehicle, go see Medine's Collision Center located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, on Kincaid Avenue. The number to call is 357-7983. That's 357-7983. Your Baton Rouge Accident Advisors. Welcome back to the Sports Scout Report Podcast with Lieber Keen. I'm your host, Jace Lejeune. For today, <laughs> switching the chairs a little bit, making it work. But, yeah, we're having fun doing it, Lee. That's hey, all that man, matters. Hell, man, look. This day could take 10 hours. Oh, yeah, this show can take, two, like, 15 hours. If a you're whole a day mom do. or dad, don't, you know, don't take it personal if your kid's name's not mentioned because there's no way that we can list all 7,000 kids today, but we're trying to list some and, yeah. and mostly talk about the team more. Sure. Right. Not more, and, not more. And, and I'm actually trying to talk about some kids that aren't talked about enough, mm -hmm. maybe, and sure. not just the star players. Right. So we'll try and keep doing that. And, and the beauty about it part, the beautiful thing about this, Lee, is that it's the playoffs. So next week, we can talk about these guys again. Right, next week, right, we can right. talk about these guys again. Right, right. It just goes and goes, and we'll break it down each and every right. week. Right, and we're just glad to do a video version. I hope everybody likes it. Um, you know, uh, if you throw eggs at me or whatever, I, hope, <laughs> I mean, we're, this is not our permanent location. We got location. faces for radio. <laughs> yeah, this is not, not our permanent location, but this is uh, a start, and we're going to try and move to a permanent location soon. Yep. So let's go to now. This is the tricky part with Division Two. It is a com combination of private Class 3A and private Class 4A teams. Just because there's not a lot of private 3A and 4A teams, they have to pretty much combine. That makes it Division Two. So let's go to the bracket and what a season E.D. White has had as a number one seed. And you, not only they're undefeated, but some of the teams that they beat this year was just as impressive, including yeah. Lutcher and St. James. I know, big time. And that's really impressive and eye-opening. E.D. White, well, because of their hard work of being those teams, they get the fortunate of being or having a bye first round. They'll play the winner of number eight, Parkview Baptist, and number nine, St. Michael. Should be a really good one in the Baton Rouge area. Then number five, St. Thomas Moore. They have Walker Howard back coming from injury. They're trying to, for the third straight year, win a state championship under Coach Jim Hightower. They have number 12, Evangel Christian. Boy, I mean, there should be a lot of passes in that game, I would say. Yep. Uh, number four, Liberty, under Dre, Dre Trosquare, Caleb Jackson having a great season in their first year in the LHSAA, uh, playing the varsity level one district, 7-4-A, and now they have to play number 13, Archbishop Hannon. On the bomb side of the bracket, you have number three, Loyola Prep. We talk about their quarterback, a do-it-all player. I'm sure you'll talk about them when we uh, talk about those players. Number 14, they have number 14, Haynes Academy. Then number six, Vanderbilt Catholic under Coach Tommy Menz on a great job this year with those guys. They have number 11, St. Louis Catholic. And then in the very bottom, be, uh, don't be uh, don't <laughs> overlook number 10, De La Salle. They have a tough one, number 7, Terrence Catholic, but we know the talent De La Salle has. And then also having a great season and deserving of a bye, the other bye in this bracket, number 2, High. Could be the most talented and the best team they've had since a couple years ago where they had Christian Harris and, you know, all those guys uh, under Coach uh, Chad Mahaffey. So that is your Division Two playoff bracket. Now let's go and uh, talk about some of these teams, Lee. E.D. White having a great season with a bye, undefeated. Some of the most impressive wins this year on their, on their schedule. Yeah. And then uh, number two, U High, having another undefeated season. Defeat Mass and Prep in a really big game earlier this year. Now, they're number one and number two, but you cannot overlook number 10, De La Salle. Look, Edie White's young, too. That's the big, scary part. They're very young, very few seniors. 
I think this is the year of you high or De La Salle. And we'll make that prediction. I kind of gave the hint out with me just now, but – yeah, they're gonna be on this, on that side of the bracket. That's I want to mention good. this real quick. U High has a special team. U High was probably more talented three years ago when they had Gordon McKernan's uh, son at sure. quarterback. They John had Gordon McKernan. They had uh, they had Michael Hollins. Michael Hollins, who was great. Makaya Tongue. Makaya Tongue. Yeah, Jordan Clark. Yeah, we I all mean, know Christian Harris. Christian Harris. They had a ton of talent. Okay. This team is so good. Like Episcopal is. We mentioned last classification. Last. Segment, Miller Leach, Derek Graham, Eden Stagg, Dylan Smith, Austin Osbury, Roman Brian Petrie, Beck. Brian Beck, Jabari Johnson, Nick Williams, Christian Granger, Justin Collins, Jason Barnes, who might be the best 5-5 yes. player in the state, who runs a 4-3. These are guys that some won't play college ball. This is a great team. And I've seen you high play every, just about every game this year. De La Salle, wow. They're going to have to play one another, I predict. Yeah. And that's going to be incredible. That, to me, is going to be – I'm going to give this one out. That's going to be the state championship game to me. The yeah. winner of that game is going to win uh, this classification. Um, I'm not taking anything away from E.D. White, who's got mm -hmm. a great team. I think next year E.D. White could be the winner next year. Um, St. Thomas Moore can't leave them out. I mean, Walker Howard, his receivers just need to be more consistent with him. Yep. In, 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 uh, in the playoffs. And the defense has defense to step up. A little better. Evangel Christian, don't count them out. They're starting to hit their stride. They're young. I've seen them play this year. Josh Booty's son's the quarterback. His other son's a receiver. They're both over 6'1", Jace. They're very talented. Lola Prep, don't count them out with Jacob Lafitte. Right. Uh, has a 57, 60-yard leg as a kicker. You don't want that game to be close if you're playing him. And, you know, Turlings and St. Louis and Vandy Catholic, all well-coached teams, along with Parkview. And St. Michael's in Baton Rouge has had a good year, and they're young. And speaking of St. Michael's, Philip Hines, not a name you hear about a lot. Sure. He's a good player. Nick Johnson's a really good. Nick Johnson, Gannon Woods of the world. They've got some good players. they got a good senior group. Parkview Baptist. I mean, they're not as talented as they've been in the past, but they're very, very good. Brandon Favre's a heck of a defensive lineman. They've got some good offensive linemen. They don't have a lot of them, but they're a good team. And, and look, this might be the only part view team I've seen that might play the same 16 players Yeah, the whole game. Right, that was their forte of being so deep. Yeah, back in the old days right. with the late Coach Guiot, they used to rotate 30, 35 players. Now they rotate the same, really same 14 mm -hmm. kids. Right. Uh, but kudos for them getting to this stage, right? Yeah. And, but I have to give this one out. I, and, I, you know, I'll pick the winner, but the sure. winner of, of De La Salle, you high to me. Yeah, I have, to, I have to agree with you there. Now, there's some teams that we can take it that would, you know, not overlook. Right. But really that quarterfinal, most likely that's going to be a quarterfinal game that could decide who is the state champion. But we'll talk about it, too, later and, on. And next year, Liberty and E.D. White will be the teams to beat. Right. Liberty's going to be the team to beat probably next year. They're all freshmen and sophomores and some juniors. I just think they haven't been on the stage yet. Yeah, they're all young team. Talented young team. Unbelievable talent. Uh, like you said, Trostclair's done a great job. I mean, they could do some damage this year, but I just, I just think they're the team to beat next year. Let's go to Class 3A on the public side, and I can name you like – Six or seven teams. <laughs> easy. Easy. That could, I would not be surprised I wins the state championship. So let's break it down. Number one, Sterlington having a great season again. They are the number one seed. They got number 32, Frederick A. Douglas. Sterlington undefeated has a couple really good wins, including against Union Parish, too. That, that rivalry game is always yeah. heated uh, between them every single year. You have number, seven, number 16, Grant. Faces off number 17, Westlake. That should be a really good football game. Number nine, St. James. They have proven they can win the state championship in Class 3A. They are led by uh, Shaz Preston, one of the best players in the nation. Well, they have number 24, North Webster, to start out. Then number eight, Madison Prep. With their star players, Zion Chris and then Quincy Wiggins at defensive end. They face off number 25, Kaplan. Number five, Church Point, one of the best defenses in Class 3A, one of the best physical, well-coached teams. They have number 28, Marksville, starting off. And there are a lot of rematches in the playoffs. Number 12, Patterson. Number 21, Donaldsonville. 
Both these two teams played earlier this year. Patterson won in double overtime. So that should be a good game between Patterson and Donaldsonville. At the bottom side of the bracket, Joel Sumner having a really good season. Just came just as close to winning district. They face off number 20, West Feliciana. Talking about great seasons, number four, Iowa. Only lost one game this year. They went 9-1. and one. They have number 29, Bozier, to start off. Number three, St. Martinville. They have one of the best receivers in the country next year. They have a lot of talent, as always. They face off another talented team, a little bit lower seed than, than in years past, but they have number 30, with Don 35. Number 14, a Burley team that's very scrappy, almost pulled off an upset last week against Madison Prep. They have number 19, Iota. Number 11, Bogalusa, having a great season. The Lumberjacks having a great season under Coach Sal Crutchfield. They host a playoff game, but it's the ever-dangerous number 22, Jennings, led by Trevor Etienne. Remember, this is a team that made it to the Superdome as a 20-plus seed. Also, number 6, Lutcher, having a great season, too. Will face off against number 27, Carroll, the Lutcher Bulldogs, going back to what made them so great uh, a couple years, winning state championships. Number 7, Union Parish, faces off number 26, Mansville. And number 10, Gina, faces off Karen Discovery. Two years in a row, both these two, two teams play in the first round of the playoffs. Number 15, Eraf faces off number 18, Wasserman. And then finally, how about the season Abbeville has had as a number two seed? We just had him on the podcast, Coach Roger Moy, the other day. You talked Moy, to him. Moy. Moy, you got it this time. <laughs> number two, Abbeville, one loss this season. They definitely earned a number two seed, their best season they've had probably in 20 years. They face off number 31, Richwood. Like I said, Lee, there are six or seven teams I could easily see coming out of this as a champion in the end. Do you agree with that statement? I have one word, brutal. This is brutal. I saw every team play in this bracket, I will say that. And that's why I say it's just – it's so hard. If if we were rolling dice right now at a casino and I said it's going to be 1-1-1, one, one, and one, I don't know. I mean, this, this is one that – Sterlington is one. They're deserving of one. But, but, man, anybody can beat anybody in this bracket. Anybody can beat anybody, and, and there's so much talent. And let me run through it because there's a lot of guys I want to mention, and I'm going to go like like as fast as I can. <laughs> uh, Sterlington, Cole Thompson, Cliff Jones, Luke Handy make up one of the best defensive backfields in the state, Sterlington, and Ram Foster. Um, Tony Rivera is one of the best fullbacks for them in the state. And I'll never, don't forget about their big old lineman. We covered Peyton Park Smith, who's 6'5", 290. Yes. Son of a rugby player. Yeah, and North Webster. We all talk about Chaz Press and it's James, but they're going to play North Webster. Hunter Price, the quarterback at North Webster, really good player, Jace. Isaiah Johnson, receiver. Jamarcus Stevens, a athlete. Drew Hutchison, 6'5", 290, we had on our cover. All from North Webster. They are a team that can win this. Uh, Madison Prep, you can't count them out with Chris. They beat St. Thomas Moore this year. They beat everybody just about. Uh, Kaplan's always tough. Tough team, man. Church Point, like you mentioned, Jace. They're as good as anybody in this bracket defensively. Uh, Marksville, you ought to see those guys. Man, they are well coached. They are tough. It's a tough draw first round. Tough draw. Uh, they don't want to play each other the first round. It's a shame. Nobody wants to in this bracket, but Patterson is so talented, man. Juniors, they're going to be back, but Marksville and Donaldsonville's best team in 30 years. Probably. Yeah, really good running back. Clark Kent. He's yep. a, they call him Clark Kent, a junior. Robert Clark Kent. Uh, Teravian Brown for them. Jamarcus Miller. Uh, Jill Sumner's very talented. Uh, West Feliciana's a very under-the-radar team. Iowa, my goodness. McQuinton Montgomery, Curtis DeVille, Bryson LeBlanc, Craig wow. Bennett. I've never seen Iowa this talent skill-wise ever. Right. Uh, Bozier, glad they got in here. I mean, they, they've got some good players people don't know about. And then St. Martinville, my goodness. They look like an NFL team. Uh, Mandrell Butler, Quentin Butler, Tanner Harrison, Harvey Broussard's the junior Harvey receiver. Broussard, yep. Those guys are big time. They've got – they're gigantic. Uh, Bruley, like you said, I've always liked this team. Uh, they, I, Iota, this is the team – this is the game, the quarterbacks. Dawson Wallace, Iota, and Sammy. How do you pronounce yeah, Sammy it? Sammy DeQuano. Sammy DeQuano. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. there you go, Jace, the quarterback from Bruley. They're great athletes. This is going to be the game of whoever has the best game out of the two. Bogalusa's got – 
Taraji Forbes, they got a great young team. They're looking good, by the way, with uh, Crutchfield. Yeah, they are. They are. Can't count out Trevor Etienne. No, you can't. A run. Russell, Rusty Phelps can't I'm, count I'm, out those guys. I'm trying to continue here. It's every team, I swear. Now, the best game in the bracket that I think people need to pay attention to is Lutcher Carroll. I watch Carroll on film. They are no way 27. Mm -hmm. No way. Give me a top seven. Let me put them in a top five. Carroll is super loaded. They got a lineman named Thomas Little, Jace. He's 6'1", 290. He runs a 4'7", 40. And he demolishes people. And their quarterback, uh, Zaylen Ford, came over from Lincoln Prep. And he's found a home. Carroll is the real deal. Carroll's my team in this bracket to maybe be like, why did they make it so far? They're talented. They're like you high in this bracket. They have a great team. Lutcher, don't sleep on them. And they're playing Carroll. Uh, Union Parish, man, their D-line is incredible. Blake Ramsey. What a stud player. Trent Meeking, uh, you know, Jaden Washington on the O-line. Cole Deason, their quarterback. Kenner Discovery, Christian Kraft, the quarterback's really good. Their tight end, Woodson, was on our cover. He's legit. Sure. Gina, don't count them out. I mean, it's everybody. ERAF is talented. Uh, Wasman's talent, led by Jay Wooten, their quarterback. Uh, Wasman's got tons of skill talent. Their linebacker, of course, Sean Hall, Charles Dad. Uh, Pat Williams, that's Patrick Williams' yeah. son from the uh, Vikings that played D-tackle. And finally, Abbeville. Abbeville's got a state championship team. I don't know how they're going to get through all these games because if they win this one, they got to play Wasman <laughs> Eraf, yeah. right? Right. Or Union Parish in the end, or sure. Carroll. But congrats to Abbeville, best team in 23 years. They're talented. Yeah. They're very talented. And in Richwood's very talented, led by Antonio Taylor. I'm really serious. This, I thought 5A would, would trump everybody, but this classification, yes. Jace, is serious. Yes. And I really don't think any of these coaches will sleep all week. It was serious last year. You look at the, the 3A state champion was Mass and Prep, and they were only like around the, where they are right now, number eight C. They are pretty much around that last year, and they may, that's when yeah. Zeon Chris really showed his ability. And uh, well, we can't. I'll be remiss if I didn't mention uh, Trey Holly for uh, Union Parish. Oh yeah, and, yeah. You know the the stud running back has a chance to be one of the all time leading rushers in high school football history. So three A is going to be brutal. It's brutal. And look, you you know deep down in my heart, you want to see Iowa make it and win it, right? You want to see Saint Martinville make it and win it. You want to see Bruley make it. You want to see North Webster. You know you want to see Eraf. You want to see Abbeville. Carol, but you can't. I mean, yeah. only a few teams. But one of them's going to make it. Yep. And look out for Carol. Look out for Abbeville. All right. Now, uh, wrap up a very tough three A bracket. We'll see who wins comes out of that one. But we'll take another commercial break. We'll we come back. We'll talk about four A and let's see if the end of Car Cougars can win again. But you're watching the Sports Gallery Report podcast with Lieber King. Be sure to take your car and truck for all your tire needs to Treads and Care Tire Company located in Central. The number to call is 331-8144. Family owned and operated since 1971. That's Treads and Care Tire Company. Welcome back to the Sports Gallery Report podcast with Lieber Keen. I am Jace Lutern <laughs> hosting today, and we're going to dig right down to the nitty-gritty with Class 4A. And the car, what can you say about them? They did not win the Class 4A state championship last year. They fell just short to Karen Crow. I believe that would have been their fifth straight state <laughs> yeah, championship. Yeah. Another uh, ring. Another ring for them. But they have a chance to come right back. Uh, they, they Their road to the state championship begins with Burbridge, the 32 seed. Number 16, Eunice, faces off number 17, DeRitter. Should be a really good get. Game between 16 and 17 there. Number nine, George Washington Carver having a really good season. They face off number 24, Landry Walker. Number eight, Salmon. They're pretty much as good as a team from top to bottom as it gets. Offense, defense, special teams. They face off the resurging Blackman Green Devils. Uh, shout out to my dad there. He's yeah. uh, really turned yeah. that team around over the last couple of games. They face number eight, Salmon. Number five, Westgate. Look at the talent they have. Danny Lewis, the tight end, and uh, the quarterback that was a receiver this year was a really good one. I think he's committed to Southeastern, by the way. Yeah. Uh, they face off number 28, John F. Kennedy. Number 12, Leesville, led by their running back, Caleb Galshaw, one of the most underrated running backs there is in the state. They face off number 21, Assumption. Number 13, Rain, having a good season. They face off one of Lee's uh, breakout teams this year, number 20, North DeSoto. 
Northwood Shreveport. They have, we talk about all the great quarterbacks. Northwood has one, a wow. really good one, yeah. Mason Welsh. They have number 29, Pearl River, and one of the leading rushers in the, in the state, and Brian Jenkins at Pearl River. Number three, Warren Easton. Well, we know they're going to be in the conversation for a 4A state championship. They start off against number 30, A.J. Ellender. Number 14, South LaFouche will face off number 19, Opelousas, in a really good game uh, here. Number 11, Bell Chase. They've actually, I believe, won at least a playoff game in the last three or four years uh, under their head coach, Stephen Myers. They face off number 22, Estruma, led by Le'Veon Moss. They're running back, uh, one of the best in the country, number six, Huntington. They have an explosive offense led by the number two passer in the state. They have number 27, Ty Oga. Cameron Evans is a quarterback for Huntington. Number seven, Cecilia. They have himself a veteran quarterback, too, and Alex Swallow. Uh, they face off number 26, Bo Shane. Number 10, Lakeshore. They've made some runs in the state championship before. They have a number 10 seed. They face off a really good season for Franklinton and quite a while for them at the number 23 seed. How about Bel Air? Hosting a playoff game. That's one of their oh, best seasons. Go Bengals. Yeah, one of their best seasons in quite a while. Congratulations to Byron Wade uh, for leading the Bel Air Bengals this year. But guess what? Congratulations, Bel Air. You got number 18, Karen, Karen Crow. Crow yeah, that is go. a very tough draw. The defending Class 4A state champs. And then wrapping it up, number two, Neville. Uh, they have a chance to win another state championship. They start against number 31, Menden, which is a very sneaky 31 seed. So there is your class 4A bracket. Everybody is saying it's Endicar and Neville and then everybody else. But we'll what are your thoughts on 4A? We'll save it for the last part of the show. But, yeah. you know, everybody knows who Aaron Anderson is. I hope you do. Um, I hope he doesn't sign with Alabama in the end, LSU, when they get a new coach. But here's why Endicar is so good this year, Jace. They have all that skill talent. They got the best defensive line in America in high school. They got Taiji Hill, Cameron Jones, Kells Bush. All three are 6'3", 280, run 4840s. That's why Edna Carr is going to – well, I'll say it at the end of the show. <laughs> it's hard not right. to uh, pick against them. Westgate. Love to see Westgate win a state title finally. Uh, love to see, uh, you know, South Lafouche make it because of all they've been through, the Tarpons. I'm glad to see South Lafouche in it. Uh, North DeSoto. Love to see them take the next step from the Shreveport area. Um, love to see Huntington from Shreveport get to that next level. They've done a great job, led by Zivion Clavel, Taji Kowinski, and Nicholas Ellis, some of their top athletes. Cecilia, love to see them get back to a state title game. And Neville, you mentioned. And Menden, here's a sleeper team. Neville's facing them. Menden's led by Andrew Cooper, the most improved player in North Louisiana. He was a running back. They moved him to quarterback. Now he looks like a D1 athlete, Jace. Hmm. Um, Katarian Lister, Connor Hurd, the coach's son. Sure. Uh, and Tyrese Lane. Menden is probably the best 31 I've seen. Uh, and then you look at these other teams. Tioga, like you said, is talented. DeRitter is very talented. Eunice has a good team. Um, Landry be a good Walker, first round game. Carver, um, Plaquemine. I want to give a, a shout out to your dad and some of his players for sticking it out, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Kobe Major, uh, Kobe Dennis, uh, Trenton Hawkins, Devin Luke. Those are some key seniors that stuck it out and became better players under your dad this year. Right, and Mike Mitchell, the quarterback, Mike probably Mitchell, one of the most yeah. improved players over the course of the season that I've seen. He's really improved and over I the course of the year. I think that's going to be one of the great games, Salmon and Plackham in your dad's game. Jack Gilligan, the quarterback at Salmon. Yeah, he's a good one. Brandon Aker. Devontae Landry's had a phenomenal year. He's probably Southeastern good now. Yeah. And Kyron Dole, the best nose guard, six foot three. Dad is worried about play. Kyron Dole. Yes, he's he is. He's that nose that Bill Belichick says, I don't care if you were ever a star. Yep, he's right? put a big red dot yeah. on Doyle. He uh, takes for, up a lot yeah. of space, and he can move. Mm -hmm. uh, Westgate, as talented as anybody in this, in this class, I would like to see Westgate make it. They're the third team outside of Neville and Nakar, in yeah, my opinion. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And in Warren Easton, they woke up. And Jay Gordon's having a good year at running back. Here's the thing, Estruma, I heard Moss might not play. Mm -hmm. He got hurt in the last game yeah. for Estruma. That's going to be something to watch out for. And that's going to be in favor of Bell Chase and Tyler Dixon and, and Coach Myers. And South Lafouche quarterback, Gisclair. Yeah, Patrick Gisclair. He yep. is, when he's in the zone, he's good. And Opelousas is very talented. But we can go on and on and on. Uh, Leesville, Assumption, Lake Shore's back in it. They're good. Um, but – so much talent in this bracket again. And I, I, we really mean this. We're not just saying it to say it, Jace, but 
so much talent in in 4A. Yeah, there definitely More is. More than normal. Usually yeah. it's just Edna Carr and Neville. Right. Or just Edna Carr and Warren East. Or maybe like, North DeSoto. You know. Sure. I mean, it's it's been, I mean, over the last couple of years, it's been Edna Carr and Neville in the car, Warren Easton. Now, Karen Crow made it last year, and they won the state championship, had a great run. But let's see if anybody else can break out in 4A, or will we see that in the car, Cougars, once again on top? We have one more break to go through, and we'll talk about the biggest of them all, Class 5A, both the public and private side. You're watching the Sports Gallery Report podcast with Lieber Keen. We'll be right back. Come and visit the Majestic Mansion in the Marsh. Grove Savant, Waterfowl, and Wildlife Lodge. Grove Savant is the true sportsman's paradise. Grove Savant Lodge has everything for you from fresh and saltwater fishing, alligator hunting, waterfowl hunting, and eco tours. Located south of Lake Charles, call 337 598 2357 or visit www.grovesavant.com for more information and schedule your trip. To the majestic mansion in the marsh, Grove Savon, Waterfowl, and Wildlife Lodge, the true sportsman's paradise today. Welcome back to the Sports Gown Report podcast with Lieber Keen. We got uh, one more after this, uh, one more commercial break, but we're going to break down the biggest of the biggest, the baddest of the baddest, and that is 5A, both public and private. And let's talk about the public side first of class 5a and we talk about war we talk about 3a but we know 5a as always is going to be a bloodbath and uh number one zachary they have the number one seed led by eli holstein david burton and the rest of his great coaching staff they are undefeated have the number one seed but they'll have to uh they'll have to play number 32 slidell Number 16, Southside, has a tough draw on number 17, East Ascension. That, that could be a game that could go either way. Uh, number 9, West Monroe, even though, you know, not as high seed as they usually are, but still number 9 seed, and West Monroe is dangerous as always with that home field uh, against number 24, North Shore, having a really good season this year. Number 8, Chalmette, having a really good season is them, the Owls. Uh, coach Tucker, he became the winningest coach in Chalmette history this year. So congratulations, Coach Tucker. They are facing off number 25, Houghton. Uh, that is a tough draw first round to yeah. face off Houghton. Yeah. Number five, Rustin. Uh, really, really surprising a lot of people this year because they graduated all these players mm-hmm. from last year. Yep. But great season, great coaching job by Coach Ball and his coaching staff as a number five seed. They face off number 28, Covington. Number 12, Benton. Having a really good season under Coach Reynolds Moore. They have a really good defense, but they'll have a tough – task against number 21 Hanville then the bomb side of the bracket probably a sleeper to watch out for I'm sure Lee will talk about this team but Wood on the Fiat Catholic High the only team to be Catholic High this year was the Wood on Panthers led by coach Marcus Randall have a really good quarterback too in Ricky Collins uh, they play against I tell you what Natchez Central could win this game too one of the biggest uh, turnarounds in 5A this year. Quarterback's hurt right now, though. We'll oh, talk, yeah? We'll talk about that. Sure. Uh, number four, Destrehan. They'll play number 29, West Jefferson. Number three, Ponchatoula. Having a good season under Coach Hank Tierney. They play number 30, Lafayette. Probably the toughest 30 C there is uh, in any classification. Number 14, John Ayrett. They have a tough draw against number 19, East mm-hmm. Jefferson. Having a great season this year. Number 11, Washtaw Parish. They finally broke through with a couple big wins. Beat West Monroe for the first time since 1994. They have number 22, Sulphur. How about your Central Wildcats, Lee? Your alma mater yeah. at number six. They play against a familiar opponent. Home team. Yep. They play against a very familiar p- opponent in Denham Springs, the 27 seed. Uh, number seven, Acadiana, trying to go for a three-peat for a state championship. Uh, they started the season uh, slow, but they yeah. picked up things the last, picked up some slack the last couple of weeks. Now they're the number seven seed. They play against numbers 26, Dylan Sampson and the Dutchtown Griffins. Number 10, Sam Ball, having a good season too under their quarterback, Cole Poirier, having a really good season. One of the most underrated quarterbacks, uh, especially in the Baton Rouge area. They play against number 23, H.L. Bourgeois. Number 15, Alexandria, started the season really hot. Uh, kind of, you know, uh, slacked off a little bit, but 
They are as dangerous as always. They play against number 18 Parkway. And then how about the season Captain Shreve has had this year at the number two seed uh, Kendrick Wall, all the weapons that they have on offense. You like Braylon Finney as well, a receiver. Really good explosive offense. They'll try to you know make it past the second round to get over that hump. But first, they have to get past number 31, Live Oak. So that is your 5A public bracket first-round matchups. Lee, we know about Alexandria, I mean, about Alexandria of course, and Acadiana. They've won back-to-back state championships. They're trying to go for a 3P. Alexandria, as I mentioned, was in the state championship game last year. Zachary has won two state championships in three years. We know what Coach David Burton is capable of. But what are some teams in 5A that, that you really like uh, to really keep an eye out for? Because this is another bracket, just like 3A, that I would, I would not be surprised to see five or six different teams come out of this one. This is the man league. This is grown men. Uh, 5A is your biggest teams, your bo- your biggest rosters. This is just, man, you know, you got 5A talent in Lafayette. You got 5A powerhouses in Monroe. You got 5A talent in St. Tammany area. You got 5A talent in Baton Rouge. 5A is all over the state. In 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, it's kind of sprinkled, you know. Not everybody has a strong 1A team or a 2A team, but 5A is well represented all over Louisiana. Zachary is the team to beat. They're well deserving of their one, number one ranking. Charles Robertson's a phenomenal receiver right now. He's really come on. Austin Freeman, their senior DN, obviously Holstein. Uh, they play a good spot, L. Jace. Uh, Taj, Taj Matt, T- Tamaj Hoffman is a really good running back. Five eight one ninety, big time power back. There's many teams I can. Uh, how much time we got? Now? <laughs> um, About thirty minutes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Look, Ruston High School can beat anybody, okay? They're number five. Um, Woodlawn, number 13, can beat anybody. Uh, Destrahan has an NFL offense and defensive line with Jai Eugene Jr., quarterback. They can beat anybody. Hanville can beat anybody. Uh, John Ehrts, come on, okay? Uh, Washtenaw Parish can beat anybody. They beat yeah, Westman they've proven it, yep. Sulphur has got a good team. They're capable of beating a lot. Katiana, man, number seven. Are you kidding me? They won the state championships right. last two years. Right. Um, Sanimal might be the best tenth seed in the whole deal. Uh, Cole Poirier is phenomenal. Lynn Amadie at DB. Uh, Noel Luke is a great receiver. Stephen Landry is a phenomenal linebacker, Jace, for them. Uh, Trishon Dunn, John Quest Paul, they have phenomenal talent at Sanimal. Sanimal is my sleeper team. Okay. Not because it's a homegrown Baton Rouge team. It's just I've seen all these teams play. I don't consider Acadiana a sleeper team, right? No. I, but I think they're still one of the top three. But, you know, obviously Zachary, Acadiana, yeah, Rustin, Rustin, Hanville, Destrahan, uh, Ponchatoula is a really strong three. Lafayette High, 30? Man, that's a, that's a tough draw for, uh, for Ponchatoula that's first That's my round. other sleeper team. I could see this game going either way. Lafayette High is incredibly talented, man. They got a 6'4 quarterback. They got a big D line, big O line, got great skill guys. I told you the other day, this was the best Lafayette High team I've seen probably in 20 years. And they're 30. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Um, and then East Jeff's got a great team for being 19. Yeah, they are. Uh, you know, it's just we can go back and forth here. Even a Covington, even an Alexandria who was runner up last year. Mm-hmm. Captain Shreve at two. Is well deserving. I've been high on them all year. Look, Bran- Braylon Finney is as good as Kendrick Law. Kendrick Law is supposedly, I think, a four or five star. Well, you got to make Braylon Finney a five star, <laughs> four star. Yep. And then they got a running back named Matt Hall, Jace, who's phenomenal. He's a great come on. It might be a guy that Southeastern looks at, McNeese, right. Southern. Speaking of quarterbacks are going under the radar, they have a really good quarterback, too, in Captain Shreve. They do, and their kicker from Calvary Baptist, Caleb Clement, yep. is a heck of a kicker. He kicks 50-yard field goals. So you don't want to be in a close game with Captain Shreve. I know Zachary's aware of them because they're across, and they might end up matching up. But yeah. it's going to be tough, man. Look, even Southside and East Ascension look as good as anybody in the state. These two teams are big. They're fast. They're gifted. Um, West Monroe, let's not sleep on West no. Monroe. They got Richard Killian at D-line at 6'4", 270. They still got great defensive. Th- their defense has actually become a really good defense mm-hmm. over the last few weeks, and their quarterback position stronger. But Javion Sanders, 
Tag Banks, man. Tommy Banks, his right. son's doing yep. a good job at linebacker. He's 6'1", about 230. Uh, Jadaris Richard, Rashawn Pleasant's committed to Tech. Right, right. Don't sleep on West Monroe. Uh, but everybody's talking. Look, Zachary, West Monroe's probably going to have to play one another before this is over. Could be a core final matchup. Right. Is where it, can you it imagine up. Woodlawn's going to probably have to play Hanville, I would think. I would take Natchitoches Central to Woodlawn, but the quarterback for Natchitoches Central is out for the year. Mm-hmm. He yep. was the stud quarterback, so yeah, that's that's a big loss because yeah, he was he, he, he was, was the engine of that team. He's D one junior. He's a big time player. He was actually looks like the quarterback from the Seattle Seahawks, Russell Wilson, yeah. the kid at Nacka Central. They beat C Bird this year. That was right. a pretty impressive win. But if this kid doesn't go down, I think Nacka Central actually could beat Woodlawn. But mm-hmm. Woodlawn's going to probably advance again. They're going to play Hanville probably or Rustin. Yeah. Rustin. Yep. Uh, Ponchatoula, you might see the East Jeff Ponchatoula battle in the second round. I'll predict Central High School, my alma mater. That is, you know, they're five, but six. But hey, I mean, put the top fifteen, just shuffle them in a bag right yeah, now. Yeah, see who comes out on top. That's... It's it's just tough to call. You know, even Central, my old high school, Johnson Swift, the quarterback's mm-hmm. a good player. Calvin Collier, the receiver. Uh, Tyler Hill, who's a great athlete. Um, and don't sleep on Parkway. Parkway's had a tough year in Bossier City, but they're a young team that's come on. Uh, Rentavious Richmond's really good, and also Cannon Link has become a better quarterback. Yeah, and that's going to be 5A. We'll talk about you know who we think is going to come out on top, obviously. But let's go to the private side of Class 5A. That's Division One, uh, And number one is the Catholic High Bears. I mean, they're one of the top teams in the country. They're pretty much loaded at – Every position you can think of, they obviously were the number one seed. They did have a setback against Woodlawn, but they could really make this team even more dangerous already having that set setback to wake them up a little bit. But Catholic High would have to play the winner of St. Augustine and Archbishop Shaw. That should be a good matchup first yeah. round. A lot of buys, just like some of the other private sides of the bracket, and this is how it goes. Number five, St. Paul's up a bye. Number four, Scoutville will have a bye, which means they'll play each other in the quarterfinals next week. So both teams will get a week of rest to prepare for that game in the quarterfinals. C.E. Bird has a bye as a number three seed. They made the state championship game last year, so they're trying to get back with a new coach, Stacey Ballou, this year. Uh, as Coach Suggs did retire at the end of last year when they made the state championship game. Uh, number six, Archbishop Rummel. They're a young team, but yeah, Coach Monk again the most out of those guys this year for being as young as they are. But like De La Salle, uh, we know that they had to forfeit a couple of games. Some things happen, but you can't count out that number 11 seed, Brother Martin, because yep, that is as strong as 11 seed you'll get. In the playoffs, we'll talk more about it. And Lee's shaking his head. He knows he wants to talk about those Crusaders. And then how about this first-round matchup? Holy Cross, been much improved since last year on their coach, Salter Formaggio. But they have the machine, John Curtis, another year in the playoffs under J.T. Curtis. He got, I believe, his 600th win this year. Incredible career for Coach J.T. Curtis. You cannot count out J.T. out. And he will host Holy Cross in the first round at Joe Yenning Stadium. And then how about number two, Jesuit? What a first season for Coach Ryan Manali uh, from De La Salle. I, I thought they would be good. And they are. And they have a really good quarterback in Jack yeah. Rivier from Jesuit, a senior. But, yep, Division One, as tough as it gets, even though it's not a long road to the state championship, it's going to be tough. Lee, break this down a little bit on how Division I uh, could look like. First of all, I think they got it right. This is the bracket that is right. One and two is the exact one and two I think you should have. Jesuits, you're two. Catholic High's, you're one. Uh, if they went out, both teams will play in the state title game. I predicted that a few weeks ago. Um, let me get into this real quick. Jesuit could probably be the only team, I think the only team that can beat Catholic if Catholic plays their game every week. Jesuit's got the best D-line in the state in 5A. I mean, they got Christian Jackson, Andrew Besh. Uh, Dennis Darty at linebacker, and Joseph Barnett. They are all over 250, 60 pounds. They're very good players. You got Catholic strong power O-line, you know, with Emory Jones and, 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 and all their players on the offensive line and, and their H-backs that we've bragged about all year. I think it would just be the greatest game ever. And in Curtis, everybody's quiet on them. JT loves that. Buddy Taylor's a great quarterback for them. 
they could always beat anybody, right? Um, Shaw St. Aug, that's going to be the game of the century. These two teams are equal. Shaw's really become a good team. They're not the old Shaw. They're, the, I mean, they're not the old last. Like 10 the old years. old Shaw. Yeah. Yeah, like they're the, not the. They're not the old Shaw, not the and they're Shaw. not the last fifteen years. Right. Shaw. Right. They're kind of coming back. Okay, mm -hmm. and then. St. Aug's got a lot of talent. You don't know who's going to win that if game. If they can play to their talent, then they're St. dangerous. St. Paul's hasn't reached their potential this year. They've been young, so they're kind of like they're due to maybe get better. Scotlandville can beat anybody. Kind of like St. Aug. If yeah, they, plays Scotlandville, to their talent. man, if they can cut down on penalties and flags, Scotlandville's as talented as they come. Uh, and then Brother Martin, hey, they're a three seed if it's not, you know, if we didn't have what mm, happened. Sure. Uh, brother Martin with Mama Hat. I mean, this guy's played like a hundred games. Right? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's been there forever. since like 1987. It right? Seems like. But uh, you know, it it comes down and Holy Cross. I like that they got in. Salter Formaggio's building something. They, I don't look for them to beat Curtis. They're better than last year. They're they, better, they, yep. but they're going to be a team to deal with next year and the year after and the year after. He's building that program like he did at Hanville and East Jefferson. Mm -hmm. uh, Bird, look, there's this is the sleeper team of the whole bracket. If anybody's being slept on, it's Bird High School, including me, until about two weeks ago. Jace, here's why. They get Logan Pons back, who was their quarterback two years ago. He comes back as a receiver. He's doing a phenomenal job at wideout. A week ago, they pick up their running back, Jacob McClure, who's been out the whole year. Mm -hmm. He comes back, runs for 100 yards. Yeah, you pair that with Mitchell Ramsey, too. That's going to be dangerous. runs a 4 or 5. Mitchell yeah. Ramsey's the best skill, I don't know, uh, Swiss Army Knife guy in the Streetport area. Yeah. And you throw that in with a junior quarterback who's back, who started in the state championship game, and they've got a they're starting to mature, including myself. Bird is the sleeper team in this whole deal, and obviously they got a chip on their shoulder. Yeah, because they got you know the game was not close against Catholic High. Yeah. They did get there though. Right. And uh, the thing with Catholic High, we've already talked about all their players. There's too many to mention. I think the key to them, Jace is getting Wesley Woodward back mm -hmm. on the D-line with his 15 sacks. He's been out a couple of weeks. They need to get him back by the semis. I think by the semifinals he can come back. That'll be big for their D-line. Yes, and uh, get Catholic High, they're, they're trying to prove something too after last year yeah. and how that, you know, where you, you can have your opinions there. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, what went down last year with them. So they want to prove that, hey, we're still, we're still the best no matter – what you say about us. Right. So, yeah, it should be really interesting to see what happens. We're going to take another break. We'll wrap it up. We'll give our predictions. Who do uh, we and I think uh, is going to win the state championship? Jace has been pushing me to give my predictions, so I will. <laughs> That's what the audience wants, Lee. we got to give them what they want. I was going to hold off for a couple of days, but you got me. All right, man. All right, we'll take a quick break. You're uh, watching the Sports Guy Report podcast with Lee Burkeen. So, hey, guys. Just wanted to take a minute to tell you about Harvey Autos. If you need a new or used car, there's three great dealerships right here worth checking out. John Harvey Toyota, Harvey Subaru, and Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City. Low prices, honest people, tell them Lee sent you. Welcome back to the Sports Counter Report podcast with Lee Burkeen. Lee, I was so excited to like, go into the matchups and talk about each of these games and the great players and just the high school football playoffs coming back. I forgot the sponsors. <laughs> this is what makes every all of this worthwhile. <laughs> well, we're putting it back in. People won't know. <laughs> right, right. But I did forget to give them a shout out personally, like wrap on just opening up the show uh, with their sponsors. But I'm going to make it up here. We're going to give everybody a shout out. Let's give a shout out first to Gross Savant Lodge. I mean, they're our newest sponsor. And this is like, I'm not a big hunting fishing guy at all, but they've convinced me uh, just uh, seeing. You would, be, uh, yeah. you would be addicted after going there one time. Right. But Gross Savant Lodge, the true sportsman's paradise. Also, they have fresh and saltwater fishing, alligator hunting, waterfowl hunting, eco tours. Located south of Lake Charles, call 337-598-598. 2357 or just visit com. Also, let's uh, give a shout to John Harvey Toyota. They have three great dealerships, by the way. Yeah. Uh, John Harvey Toyota. You got Harvey Subaru. Lexus okay. of Shreveport, Bossier City. They have pretty much have any vehicle that you want with those three dealerships. Uh, they have low prices, honest people. What more can you ask for from, uh, from you know, car salesmen? And they're so. sports fans. Thank you, Tommy Harvey. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, tell them that Lee and Jace sent you yeah. over at John Harvey Toyota. Also, let's look at uh, Medine's Collision Center, too. I mean, Chris Medine, I've, I've talked to him a couple of times. Yeah, we you met, met with him. Yeah. And Good. very nice guy. Uh, and that's what you get with not only Chris, but the whole Medine family, too. And, uh, yep, you have to contact them, and they'll be there right with you. Uh, any problems at all, they'll, they'll be right on top of it. And, yeah, just contact Medine's Collision Center. Uh, and they are very reliable. They'll get back with you. Uh, they're very convenient, too. Uh, but, yeah, call 225-357-7983, located on 5275 Kincaid Avenue. In Baton Rouge. In Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And then we have uh, one more, Treads and Care Tire Company. And we got to really appreciate Devin Holly for all that he's Great done guy. for us. I mean, he's really helped you since the magazine days, too. Yeah, way back. All these companies are just great people. So tires, brakes, oil changes, you name it, they, they got you covered. Uh, Treads and Care Tire Company, call 225-331-8144 if you have any problems whatsoever with your car. And, you know, definitely with tires and brakes, it, it happens to the best of us. They can get you and they can take care of you and get you covered call once again that number again is 225-331-8144 park place drive in central town of central the tire you need the service you want there you go treads and care appreciate, tire company appreciate all the support from all these companies thank you very much yeah we cannot do it without them and uh yeah let's let's uh give our predictions out lee for uh yep all these brackets, that's, these are what the, uh, everybody waited so long for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's see what these two guys pick. Uh, well, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you go first on that. I'm gonna okay. Give me a little more time to like, you know. Then you can criticize us. Yeah. Uh, the, the best part about video, these are receipts, <laughs> right. so you can keep these receipts. Hold me to it. Hold them to it if I get if I'm <laughs> dead wrong on these. I should have had these when I got them right in the past. Right. <laughs> right. Nobody right. remembers those. No, no, they remember the ones you get wrong. That's on. right. That's right. So, this is what I think is going to happen. I have Zachary coming out. Even though I can see five or six teams coming out of this bracket here, I have Zachary winning the F Class 5A state championship. I like Eli Holstein. I like the they're able to run the football. Uh, really ran the football well against Walker. They have a really good defense. They have a really lot of weapons like you talked about with Charles Robinson, too. I uh, really like Zachary here, and it's just been in this position so many times over the years. I have Zachary coming out. They, I have Rustin actually reaching the semifinals. I think they're actually better than last year, and last year they were really good, and that's considering that they had to replace a lot of guys from last year. I really, I really like Rustin here to go a game further, and on the other side, I have Washita making the semifinals because they've proven to me they can beat anybody in 5A with the games they've won this year. But I have a Kadiana beating Washita. I think Kadiana just wants to prove people wrong about being that number seven seed. And then the state championship game, Zachary at Kadiana. I have Zachary coming out on top. And so Zachary is my class 5A state champs. I'll tell you what, the Broncos are going to like you, man. Oh, yes. Yep. Uh, Checks in the mail, David. <laughs> you know, Zachary people always remind me when I don't pick them. Uh, and here we are, here we are with a video version, right? So really, <laughs> right. Yeah. So here's the deal. There's three teams I think that I like a lot. I like Zachary, Acadiana, like yourself, and Destrahan. Yep. And the team that I'm really struggling with between the winners of this whole thing, I think Destrahan is the team that you don't want to get into a heavyweight fight with in the playoffs. Destrahan looks like a college. And they are skill-wise loaded. They're loaded. I mean, they like when you scout them, I think you just close your eyes as a D coordinator going, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. I mean, Destrahan's that good. And they're quietly good, right? Because they're not one or two right now. Captain Shreve, I'd like to see them get to the state championship game. But, you know, they're kind of a newbie to get to that next step, next step, next step. They sure. can. They've got right. some talent. I'm going with the experience. I'm going with the three-time champion. Okay. Kind of like Rocky Balboa, you know. Sure, right. They right. got they lost last year. They didn't get to the state championship game. They got a chip on their shoulder. I'm going with Zachary. Yeah. I'm not picking the matchup like you because mm -hmm. I didn't take the time to really, okay. you know. Yeah. You know, I'm not ready for that. But That's fine. I think the other two teams is Acadiana, like you said, and Destrahan. Destrahan's the team you really 
I mean, it, I might I might regret my decision. Destrahan's <laughs> Hand's really good. So we're on the same page for five A. In both. four, four I'd go Captain Shreve. Yeah. Okay. So f- both me and Lee agree on five A. Zachary agree on that. coming yeah. out. So yeah. that's that's a first, probably the only. But that we'll might. see. We'll see what we'll happens. see what happens. Division one. I mean, they've just been the most dominant team. I, f- I feel like in the state all season long, and really the Woodlawn game. You got to give credit to Woodlawn for being Catholic. They actually outplayed Catholic. Uh, yeah. But when they're on. I don't think anybody can compete with these guys. Uh, I have Zachary coming out on that side of the bracket. I do have Catholic beating St. Uh, actually, uh, Scotlandville in the semifinals on that side. And then on the other side, it's going to come down to this. It's going to come down to Brother Martin and Jesuit. It really is. And then Brother Martin actually won the first time around uh, off a of missed field goal. So that's, that's how close that game was. Yeah. And I really think that Brother Moore, they, they have a chip on their shoulder, too, concerning that, hey, you can do all this to us. I think we'll still get there. I like the veteran leadership on their team with Garrett Mamahat and all the pieces they have around them. They have a really good linebacking crew, a really good running game uh, with uh, Tory Lambert, uh, Coach Corey Lambert's youngest younger son, and then uh, Corey Lambert Jr. obviously being the, the captain on the defense in the secondary I like Brother Moore. I really like Jesuit. I can see that game going either way. Uh, Jack Rivier is really good. One yeah. of the best quarterbacks out there. I put him on the cover of the yeah, summer. and yeah. it's much well-deserved. Good call there because he's the real deal. I love this game. I, I like Brother Martin's veteran leadership in that one, and they really show the, uh, you know, with John Curtis really being them pretty good last week. That showed me a lot there. I have Catholic High playing Brother Martin in the state championship game. And I have Catholic High coming out on top. This was a rematch, actually, of the semifinal game last year. But I think Brother Morin's motivated to get play Catholic again in the state championship game. I, I, I would not be shocked that Jesuit wins that game and Jesuit goes and plays Catholic. Yeah. But I have Brother Morin getting the slight edge and playing Catholic. But I think Catholic comes up on top winning the state championship. Here's my theory on this whole bracket. and Everybody in this bracket is really good. I got the one and two right. This is the only one and two that might end up one and two. I've got Catholic. I will pick the second team in this one. I think it's going to be Jesuit Catholic. But you know what's interesting here, Jace? Jesuit would have to be Curtis and Brother Martin to get there. Mm -hmm. And here's why I think they will. They're tired of Curtis beating them. They finally beat Curtis this year for the first time in like six times or eight or whatever it was. So they have a chip on their shoulder. They want to play Curtis. They want to beat Curtis again. Yeah. And they want to beat Brother Martin. They want to, They are so hungry with Ryan Manali. And this D-line that Jesuit has, but, you know, Jack is a great quarterback. They mm-hmm. got great, great offensive line. Yep. I really believe that the D-line of, of Jesuit against the Catholic O-line is going to be a war. Mm-hmm. And I think the D-line for Jesuit is going to get them through the playoffs, their defense, with the linebacker core okay. with Darty, number one. Sure, uh, yeah. I can't pronounce his last name. He's a junior. It's Joe Suss, something like that. Yeah, but, yeah. But that, that linebacking core led by Dennis Darty, the D-line we mentioned. Um, and you know what puts a kink in all this? If if Bird ends up upsetting yeah, they someone. Could. Yep. But I, I do think it's Catholic Jesuit. And then the, the winner, man, I'm going to say it's going to be one of the all-time greats it could be a classic that ESPN can play, but I think mm. it's going to go down on the wire. I think Catholic wins it all. Okay. So we agree on that one. We agree. I mean, we disagree probably on who Catholic plays yeah. in the state championship, but that game could go either way. But we do agree that Catholic High comes up on top on Division One. Yeah. Now, we got to be speedy because I was with 10 more minutes left yeah. of the spare. Uh, Class 4A, I think until they prove me wrong, I just have to go with them in the car. I mean, just we talk about Aaron, Aaron Anderson could have that Puka Williams type of run with just really making explosive plays and really carrying the offense. Yeah. Well, uh, well here's the deal, Jace. You got the best D-line in Louisiana and the United States in high school with Edna Carr. Yeah. You got the best O-line in Neville. Yeah. You got Will Campbell going against Taji Hill, right? So this is a this is a game of O D line in the trenches. I think Neville's gonna win the state championship. Okay. So I you think, got Neville. I think they have a chip on their shoulder more mm. than even Carr, because Carr just missed it one year. Right. Neville's missed it a few sure, years. Sure, sure. And I really believe that Neville's Britt Batterford is going to really this is coming out party to run the ball. Mm-hmm. Senior quarterback Anthony Allen has dominated yeah, Ant- all year. Anthony Allen AJ is Allen, really good. Yep. In its sledge, their D tackles big time. Strader, Debose, and the defensive backfield, 
and Hinton Roberts is one of the most unsung heroes at linebacker for Neville. But I think Neville's going to win it all. Okay, there we go. We yes. have some friction now. I got in the car. So, there we uh, go. Yep, but so, I do have that matchup. Yeah, I think it's going to be that matchup. Now, do I think a Westgate could sneak yeah, in? Easily. Yeah, they could. Uh, Westgate. I think Westgate and Warren Easton are like the only – like Westgate went in the car too. side. I like Cecilia. Cecilia. Uh, you know, Northwood's having a good year. Salmon's having a good year. I can see those teams – Making you know, making a run at it, but in the end, I think it's going to come down to end the car and Neville, like it was in the past, until they prove me wrong. Again, Will Campbell, Will uh, Campbell, and uh, Taji Hill. That is going to be then, a great and matchup. Sledge and all those guys yep. against Cars O line. You're going to be seeing a lot of Saturday You're see players. Some grown men, okay. Yep. And at the end of the day, I always go at linemen. You mm-hmm. can talk about all that skill players yep. all day long, right? But linemen is what gets you to the dance. Yeah, and a good quarterback. And the reason I'm picking Zachary is because their quarterback's so good sure. that they're not the greatest on the O line. They got mm-hmm. good good kids, but they make makes up a whole for lot of difference with a future All American quarterback. Yep, should be interesting. You got Neville, I got in the car, so that's what we have right. in four A. We'll see what comes out on top. That should be a great one, regardless in the state championship game. Uh, let's go to three A. Uh, so on that on that public side, I have now. This was a team. These are like five or six teams. I could easily see coming out of it, but I really like Sterlington because they've uh, they played a lot of tough teams so far this year, including Union Parish, and uh, they played uh, a lot of the best teams in North Louisiana. They've proven it. They're really good on the deep. We talk about in the secondary. They want to this their style of uh, football is a winning a winning formula in the playoffs. So that's why I really like them controlling the time of the clock, playing great defense, not turning the football over. I like Sterlington to come out on one side of the bracket. And then I like Union Parish. I like Union Parish or Trey Holly, that offensive line. Talk about offensive line. They that was what Union Parish derives on. I think like late in December, that style of football, that hard hitting ground and pound, one of those, you know, sledge it uh <laughs> right in between your your mouth. I think I like that style of play. And I like Sterlington and Union Parish. That if they play in the state championship game, talk about a heated battle. Both these teams do not like each other at all. I'd love to see Sterlington and Union Parish that heated game play in the state championship game for all the marbles. And yeah, I think Sterlington's going to come out on top. I really like Sterlington this year, but I could be wrong. I'm taking St. James to win it all. How about that? How about St. The, James. How about those apples? Yep. And here's why. St. James had a uh, a lot to deal with with the hurricane, with their facilities, Jace. They lost some games, and it was really a tough transition. I think they're finally just now getting back as a, a community. And they're the most talented defense. You heard me say it all year long. I think they can stop Sterlington's offense. They're the only team that can defensively in the bracket. St. Martinville, I'm really pulling for St. Martinville and Vincent Duran to, to make it right, to make it to a state title game. Uh, but here's one we just throw the dice. I really think – I'm thinking outside the box, but I'm taking St. James to win it all. And I'm taking a sleeper team on the other side. I'm going to go ahead and pick Abbeville. Okay. Uh, Abbeville's got a great 6'3 quarterback. they got two phenomenal 4'440 receivers. they got a big O-line. they got a great defense. I'm going Abbeville, St. James. I'm going different. I'm not surprised we're different because I can see six or like I said, six or seven teams yeah, come out. It could of be it. any yeah. of these. Yeah. We could have five people sitting here and everybody yeah, picks seven different or things. eight different winners from this classification. Yep. Three A is gonna be interesting to and watch. Madison Prep's still in there. They're the yep, defending Madison champs. Madison Prep would not be surprised they are in the state championship too. Yeah. Uh let's go to the private side three A and four A division two. And uh yeah, for this one. In division two, I have uh U High going to the state championship playing against E D White. Uh, I think uh, U High gets the victory over Dale South in the core finals, and I think U High is the best team all year. So I got U High coming out of Division Two. I got U High and St. Thomas More. Okay. Uh, Walker yep. Howard against U High. I'm going to go U High as a Cinderella team. They're going to have to beat De La Salle to get there, but I'm going to take U High to win it all. Uh, going to Division Three, private side of Class Two A, I have until they prove me wrong, uh, uh, Lafayette Christian Academy. I have them beating like Episcopal. So I have a pistol being Newman in the quarters, but I have a pistol going to the semifinals. Lafayette Christian, I have them playing against St. Charles Catholic in the state championship game. I have St. Charles Catholic being Notre Dame in the semis. But Lafayette Christian, I have them coming out on top. 
I think Lafayette Christian's the team to beat. I think St. Charles Catholic is the sleeper to beat. So um, I'm going to go with Lafayette Christian and win another one. Uh, public side of Class 2A, I have Manny uh, going to the state championship on the top side. I have Manny being the Voyles in the semifinals. And I have General Trice being Mangum in the bottom side of uh, Class 2A. I think General Trice trying to get, break down that door, go to the state championship where they'll face off against Manny. But I think Manny is just too much for their skill talent. I have Manny win Class 2A. I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to go Manny and Jess Curtis. Too much tack at Curtis on offense and defense in that O-line. Manny wins another one. Division four, I have. Uh, I think the winner of that OCS Calvary Baptist semifinal game is going to win it all, and I think OCS gets some revenge on Calvary. It's going to be tough, but I have OCS going to the state championship on one side. I have Southern Lab going to the state championship on the other side. I have OCS winning the state championship. I have Calvary Baptist repeating because of that offense. I do think OCS will be. Incredible in the playoffs, but I just I think Calvary's offense. Is I just think too the good. winner of that semifinal game is going to yeah. win it all. And then public side class one A, I have Oak Grove going again. Don't be deceived by their six and four record. I have Oak Grove. I think they're the best team in one A, and they'll prove it again. Now I think Homer breaks through. They'll go to the state championship, but it's going to be too much uh, for Homer to handle. I have Oak Grove again win three straight for the first time in program history. I think Oak Grove is going to be the winner. Uh, Bradley Jackson is going to be probably MVP, the young quarterback. Josh Bradley's son, the former LSU tight end, Louisiana Tech tight end, six foot seven. Josh Bradley, if you remember in the 80s. Well, Lee, I think we're about to wrap it up. But in case if you don't know why we don't know this much, uh, know this much about high school football, this is Louisiana Football Magazine. This is uh, the South copy. This is the North copy. Order your copy today, Louisiana Football Magazine. Go to LAFootballMagazine.com. I think I'll do it. Do it for us uh, today, Lee. I appreciate it. We'll, we'll try to see if we can do this uh, playoff week by week yeah. and see if we can uh, go through the playoffs and go to the road to the dome. But hey, uh, We're learning our equipment. It's our first day doing a video show, and I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll continue to talk about these kids as we go further along, like you said, Jace. Hope everybody has a safe week when you travel. I know it's only Wednesday. But uh, I know everybody's pumped. There's nothing like it. Moms and dads, aunts, uncles, grandmothers, grandfathers, cousins, brothers, sisters. Man, shut the towns down. Let's go play these games. Yeah, I hope everybody enjoys their football weekend, and we'll uh, check back with you on Friday. Thanks for listening to the Sports Scouting Report podcast with Lee Brookings.